Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this particular video, I'm going to be testing out the Movo WST220 windshield for shotgun microphones. Okay, so the point of this test is to test the Movo WST220 windshield for a shotgun microphone. Now, I'm using a Sennheiser ME66 and it's quite windy. Uh, so hopefully we should be picking up some wind um, before I put this on them. Let's see what reduction it actually gives us. Now, the one thing I will make you know perfectly clear is that the type of stuff that I normally film, I, do, I don't go out in like mad, mad gales and like hurricanes and stuff like that so i'm not expecting this to like you know act like a dead cat or a blimp system or anything like that it's just important for me sometimes when i'm out doing interview work you know to avoid getting like them little like you know little strenuous breezes and stuff which would otherwise ruin a great take now something like this if this can get rid of like mild breezes then i'd be dead happy with it although i have to say right now this is actually beyond a bit of a mild breeze or what i would consider to be a mild breeze so anyway what i'll do i'll put it on and do a bit more talking okay so i've now got the movo on and hopefully we will have noticed a reduction in the amount of distortion that we were getting on the capsule because shotgun microphones by the very nature are very sensitive and they will respond to the slightest of breezes and like i say you know i'm not expecting it to knock out a hurricane or anything like that because me personally i wouldn't use a microphone in that scenario or if i did i would resort to using a full blimp system with a dead cat and stuff like that and the other thing that's really important for me is to find out as to how much tonality change there is when I use the actual windshield because the, you know for me personally there's no point in putting anything on a microphone if you're going to kill the microphones like you know characteristics and stuff so hopefully this is going to be enough for us to gauge exactly what it is and it isn't doing now what I'm going to do I'll just hold out the microphone without any talking with and without the actual windshield and we'll see how effective it is Okay, so that should give us a really good idea as to the performance of this particular windshield. Now, what I'm going to do is go and find somewhere that's not so windy so I can do a summary. Well, actually, I'll have a listen first and then I'll do the summary. Okay, so to the summary then. I was really made up actually with that WST220 and I was very unfair on it as well. In the part of the test where I was actually just getting the shotgun and pointing it into the wind with and without the Movo on it, the part of the, the, the actual test where the Movo was on it was the worst wind I had down there all day because I'd actually been, I was actually also doing the exact same test for the Rode NT5, which you can see in another video. In fact, I'll have that pop up on the end somewhere of this video so you can go and have a look at that test as well. It's basically the exact same test as this one, but with an NT5 and a WST80. Now anyway, at the point of the test where I did the WST220 on the Sennheiser, when I was filming that bit, it was the worst wind that had been there all day. And, um, and I know you can hear something when I cut to and from it, but it was the worst wind. In fact, if you have a look at the jacket that I've got on, you can see that blowing and getting all like, you know, moved by the wind. Whereas when I did the section of that test where the Movo wasn't on, it wasn't as windy. Now, you might go, well, hold on a minute. Well, if you can still hear wind, what's the point? Well, the thing is for me, like I keep saying, that type of softy mechanism, I would only expect that to be effective in a slight breeze. Now, say for instance, and I've actually done this, say for instance you're in say a city center or you're in like a park or somewhere somewhere where you're not in a massive open space but somewhere where you're going to get like the little slight odd breeze coming in and out and whatnot that's when they really are dead useful and i've done this and they do get rid of all the like minor breezes that can float around you just just like during normal everyday shooting now, what I would say though, is that if you kind of listen back at the sections where I was doing dialogue, some of that got very windy as well. 
And as far as I'm concerned, it stood up amazingly well because it didn't interfere or didn't let the wind interfere with the dialogue. So even though you might still get a little bit behind it, as long as it maintains the, the vast majority of the integrity of the dialogue, it's exactly what you want. So I think it was brilliant doing that. And the other thing as well, I don't think it interferes with the tonality either, which for me is mega important. Now, it may do very slightly, and it may do if you stick it on a scope or something, but, you know, just, just for normal straight listening and whatnot, I don't think it's interfering with any tone. So for me, again, that's a massive plus point. Anyway, that's what I think of it. You can make up your own mind after what you've heard there and all the rest of it. But for £22, which is all it costs me, you know, it's a kind of like a no-brainer to have something not like that in your kit bag. Now, basically, what it'll do, it'll accept the diameter of a tube of between 19 to 23 millimetres. So that covers the vast majority of things made by, say, Sennheiser or Rode or similar and also the 220 in its name is actually an indicator of the depth that the actual tube of the mic element can go inside the Movo so as a for instance says WST 220 well that means like you know 220 millimeters so that's 22 centimeters you can go in so as long as you're covering or like the slats and stuff or the holes within the tube element of a, of a like you know a shotgun or a condenser as long as it's covering all that you should be fine i mean the more of the mic you cover for wind the better but you've got to remember outside of using a blimp and a dead cat you're always going to have the back end exposed because that's where your switches and your xlr are and everything like that but yeah for what it's doing and like you know for its portability for ease of use for me, it's a winner. Anyway, thanks very much for watching another one of my videos. Take care and goodbye now.